Well, we got more on NXT UK 205 Live, but also the continuation of the Never on NJPW Strong. But all of that will be discussed and reviewed on Deleted WrestleZone. everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, many promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host Jay right here, so let's just jump right in with NXT UK. Uh, this has become an interesting episode for them. As you know, they recently just got back for a couple weeks since they've been on hiatus for months due to pandemic and of course the heritage cup it's in its final wake of the first round and we're gonna i'm very excited who's gonna win i pretty much have a good idea who might win because it kind of pops in my head or should i say who would be also in the finals which would make a lot of more sense but however let's start from the start to the to the finish it started out with Eddie Dennis versus uh, Oliver Carter. Now, we haven't seen Eddie Dennis around the same time as the pandemic, but as you know, many of the NXT UK stars were unable to participate uh, because some wrestlers are not originally from the UK. Some are from Ireland, others from Welsh, Scotland, or other places or places from Europe that allows them to live in the UK that sort of scenario versus another wrestler we haven't seen either Oliver Carter uh, this shows more of uh, Eddie Dennis more of his aggressive side um, but he did won the match in a great way for his re-entrapped return but however apparently he started to talk about his fellow Welshmen or countrymen from Welsh we're talking about Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews. As you all know, read or don't know, before the end of the pandemic, someone attacked Mark Andrews, and then at the end of the first round of the Heritage Cup, someone attacked Flash Morgan Webster. Dennis has been stirring things up, believing that maybe it was Flash Morgan Webster who attacked Mark Andrews, and or was it? And then there's Mark Andrews that attacked Flash Morgan Webster. So he started to stir things up. So basically, there's going to be a bit of confrontation between Morgan and Webster and Dennis to post it out who was attacking them. Dennis is the kind of guy who likes to stir things up. So that's up until next week. So I'm kind of curious how this is going to go. Next thing we know, we did made the announcement. Now, I don't know how you WWE fans, either if you guys are watching this from the UK or if you guys follow NXT UK here in the States all the way to UK, Joe Coffey is finally making his return. As you all know, Joe Coffey hasn't been seen. He was suspended during the time of the speaking out movement. There was some misconduct on his part that allowed his suspension. But now it appears he's returning. His stable faction, Gallus, is continuing to be strong as always. So this is going to be a very interesting thing to see. So I'm pretty much excited to see. But however, those who have mixed feelings over wrestlers that were accused during speaking mouth movement I understand it's kind of interesting it's kind of like a load of crap we have seen some stars were released but there's certain circumstances that surround it but we'll see how that goes next up it's already been finally announced as well since Joe Coffey is also is making his return he's not the only Irish is coming back. I'm talking about the 
the Irish ace, Jordan Devlin. So we haven't seen him either because also he was amongst the few wrestlers that were accused during the speaking out movement. Now, I don't know how people would feel about that or react to it. I know WWE said that they were looking into it. Uh, Jordan Devlin hasn't spoke out any more further, not since the, he stated that he's not, he's not, he's going to, he made that statement about denying the allegations and all that, he only mentioned that once, but I don't know how you guys would feel, but also I think they're jumping in with the story about how pissed off he is that they decided to crown a brand new NXT, uh, NXT Cruiserweight Champion. Originally, it was supposed to be an interim, but then later they changed it. So Jordan Devlin made it perfectly clear that he is the true Cruiserweight Champion. So I don't know how you guys would feel. I mean, he's talented and all, but I cannot take sides to matter because I still don't know what is the outcome of what happened back in June when he was accused. Uh, Did they actually find anything or they're just going to, you know, look the other way. That's one of the facts that I don't understand. Same thing with Joe Coffey as well. I don't know what's the circumstances that they did not pending on investigation towards. I don't know either. So we just gotta wait and see. Now the next match is a revenge match between Amela, Amela and Nina Samuels. A couple weeks ago, they were in a tag team match against um, Cy uh, Brookside and of course uh, Danny Luna uh, Amela was out of her damn mind she wanted to take the spotlight and Nina Samuels did not like it so whatsoever she walked off and they, it went on to a melee about after the state the state of uh, union by Kaylee Ray but now this match was set but it did appear like Amela could have won but apparently her cockiness was her over oh she was overconfident but however Nina Samuels was able to pick up the victory as always by a submission and however it appears that she's now paying attention to one person and that person is Piper Nevins uh she made that on the on the post-match interview um that she is paying attention she feels that the spotlight needs to be more on her as you know, Piper Nevin has been on the spotlight many times over in order to obtain the NXT UK Women's Championship. So we don't know if Dina Samuels may be the next competitor that wants to be on the top list. So I say she could be one of those that want to get a shot at that title. So we'll just wait and see. Now, for the main event, we have, of course, the Heritage Cup tournament uh, final opening round between Trent Seven and Kenny Williams. Now, Kenny Williams was the wild card in this match. The match was great. I, The first couple of rounds, there was no winner. Somehow, um, Kenny was able to pick up the first round, and I'm like, wow, Kenny is good. I'm not going to lie about it. But later, Trent picked up the slack and picked up his victory. And then somehow, Trent picked up his second win. So automatically, he is currently in the semifinals. So he will be facing... Um, what was he facing? Oh, yeah. David Mastiff in the semifinals. While Noam Dar will be facing Aiken. But this is the scenario I see. So stay with me. I see Trent Seven somehow overcoming the massive. He wants to find goes to the finals. I see Noam Dar winning his semifinals, going to the finals, and the finals will be Noam Dar and Trent Seven. Now you probably ask me why would I think that way? There's various scenarios. Noam Dar believes that he is the true star in the entire NXT UK universe, so he felt that it's his time now. People need to shut up. It's his moment. Trent Seven, who's been well familiarized, a, a great figure in the British wrestling scene for a long time. So that's the reason I see it. You look at 
Trent Seven, who's not going to tolerate Noam Dar's BS or his cockiness. So that's how I pictured in that particular match. Now, the semifinals will take place maybe next week or next two weeks. I'm not sure yet. I will let you guys know when I review it this next week. Now, the next thing we have is the way the show ended is the contract signing between Ilya Dragunov and Walter. Now, it's already been official. Next week, it's going to be the challenger, Ilya Dragunov versus the NXT UK champion, um, Walter. This this was a final contract. Neither men had anything to say. It just turned into a full-on melee, just back and forth fighting. Walter, and if you guys follow the story, was the one who trained Ilya Dragunov, and now he wants to destroy him because Dragunov is thirsty for greatness, and he's not. And Walter is not going to allow that to happen. Now, the real speculation is, is he the guy who is going to be able to be thrown Walter? As you know, Walter has been the most dominant of force in the NXT UK. Some of you fans ask, uh, uh, probably say, is Walter ever going to go to, to the NXT down in, in the States? And the answer is no. He made it perfectly clear. He has no interest of going into NXT. He has been there, but he's not moving from Europe all the way to NXT, to the United States. That's what he says. Now, I understand WBC a great potential in him, but however, it, it feels like for him, it's not his scene, you know? But it is what it is. So, it ended with the melee between Dragunov and Walter. We just got to wait and see what's going to happen next week. I'm excited to watch. I hope you guys too. So, right now, let's jump into 205 Live. Alright, so this is going to be a short, simple segment with reviewing 205 Live. As you know, this is my second time reviewing it. Uh, as you probably ask me, why am I doing it now? Well, let's just say I want to see the feud. Now, I've always been a fan of the cruiserweights or the junior heavyweights. Because if you guys don't know this, I follow Dragon Gate. And that particular promotion is all the junior heavyweights, cruiserweights, light heavyweights those type of scenarios. 205 Live is kind of similar. I've always asked myself, why did they move the Cruiserweight Championship to NXT? They could have just left it in 205 Live. But it is what it is. WWE, I don't know what they're thinking. But however, let's just review what they had for that very particular day. First match, it's Brian, the D, Brian Kendrick versus Mansoor. This is one of those matches for Brian Kendrick. As you know, he's been on a losing streak. A week ago, he lost to Isaiah Swerve Scott. But Mansoor is looking to make a name for himself, which is kind of interesting because we have seen Mansoor before. Uh, if you guys know, you've probably seen him in the, um, in the Royal Rumble that they did in Saudi Arabia. You know, that's what they, I forgot what they call that. But yeah. But it was a good, it was an okay match. I'm not gonna say it's one of the best, but it's kind of interesting. But Mansoor picked up the victory, but I'm not sure exactly what angle they're currently gonna give Brian Kendrick. Um, I'm still trying to understand that because, um, as you know, Brian Kendrick is a veteran. He's been involved in the cruiserweight division anywhere in the world. That's what that's his uh, weight class that he's been. Been involved in, but we'll just wait and see in the upcoming weeks how they're gonna play this out. And then they have the Bollywood boys coming out, throwing a little bit of a party to everyone, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm not much of a fan of the Bollywood boys yet. If you put them in the match and give me something to see, then yeah, but we'll see how that goes. Now, the set the final match. Was between Tony Nese and Kurt Stallion. Now, if you guys don't know what happened last week, Aria Davari made up a stipulation where he put out like a briefcase. Kurt Stallion was nearby to win, but Tony Nese got in the way. Now, this is more of a 
revenge match between Kurt Stallion and Tony Nese. He wants some payback for what the for what Tony Nese did to Stallion. But it was a good match. It appears like Stallion was giving the momentum to win the match. But however, he took his eye off the ball when he saw Davari right in front of him. So the first thing is don't ever take off. So he that cost him his match. Allowing Tony needs to pick up the victory. And then Davari, who still has some issues with Kurt Stallion, uh, attacked him and Tony needs tried to stop him. So I don't know exactly what they're going to do with Kurt Stallion. From what I understand, he is still with the Performance Center. As you know, WWE has stockpile of talent that they still haven't put on TV. Nor they've been putting in matches in the Performance Center prior before the pandemic. So, I think that's it for now for Tool Live Live. Um, right now, we're gonna excuse me, we're gonna jump in with NJPW or the Never Series. Well, NJPW Strong still continues with the Never Series, which I'm excited about. Uh, as you both know, I'm doing a research on the Never Series, if you guys don't understand that. That's going to be, it's still in the works, I'm still doing more research on it. But however, let's talk about the matches they had in particular for this one. First match is Clark Connors, who won the Lions Break Crown, versus Fred Roaster. If you guys know who he is, he was formerly known as Darren Young in WWE. Uh, this has showed now we're seeing Clark Connors that maybe he could be the next um, student from the LA Dojo, could be graduating soon alongside Carl Fredericks. That is something we have been noticed. He was a fan favorite to win. But however, Fred Browser, we all know who he is as Darren Young, what he's accomplished. But it was a good match to show Clark Connors that. He's now stepping into a, he was like the fish in a big pond, in a small pond. Now he's a fish in a much bigger pond. So this was a perfect test for him to face a guy like Fred Roaster. Uh, I was kind of hoping that he might put Fred Roaster in the Boston, in the Boston Crab because he's, he, that's been his only signature move that he's been using. But however, it wasn't enough with Fred Roaster beat him which was unbelievable. I didn't expect that whatsoever. So I'm like surprised to see um, Fred Rosser finally getting a victory as a, as a singles competitor. Um, as for Clark Connors, well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it will take until he graduates from the LA Dojo, but we'll see how that goes. Speaking of the LA Dojo, former LA Dojo young lion, Fredericks is set with, with scheduled to face against none other than ACH. Um, this is one of those matches where you have the up and comer versus a veteran like ACH. If you guys have followed ACH over the years, you guys know what he is good, he was cocky, he brings a little bit of the comedy, but this puts Carl Fredericks in a good test mode because he has been unable to pick up the victory since New Japan Strong started. Um, practically, this shows a little bit of his side that he's willing to win, uh, try to pick up a victory since he now he has to step up his game since graduating the LA Dojo. But however, he actually fulfilled it. He actually fulfilled his first victory in New in NJPW Strong. So I'm very happy that he finally got his victory. Fan of ACH, I mean, I love what he does. But Carl Fredrickson, that's a guy you gotta pay attention to. If you guys don't know this, he actually won the Lions Cup. So he is one of those uh, rising stars you need to pay attention to. I'm excited for this. <laughs> Next match is a tag team match between the GOD, the Gorillas of Destiny, versus Flip Gordon. This is one of those matches where you know you got one of the best tag teams in all of in the world between like the G uh, GOD. And 
we all know what they're capable of. And as for Flip and Brody, we've been seeing them consistently more in NJPW Strong. But, of course, uh, there were some great moments in the match. However, the uh, G.O.D. did not want no piece of Brody Lee. But, however, they actually did. got in a, they, Brody got a piece of them. But they also, the girls of Destiny are known to set up tactics where they distract the referee, which they're good at. So, it's kind of very unique way how it went. But, of course, the biggest surprise is when... Um, Flip was about to do the Red Riding Cutter on Tama, but however, he reversed it into the gun stun. It was so interesting. Nothing compared like what uh, Randy Horton did with um, Matt Seidel, formerly known as Evan Bournes, with the Shooting Star Press um, turned into an RKO, which is familiarized, but it was a good match. I'm not now the main event we got is Rocky Romero versus Jay White. As you know, Rocky has some history with Jay White. If you guys are new to this, uh, following New Japan, Jay White was a member of Chaos until he turned his back on them, betraying the leader Okada, in order to become to gain more recognition, and then he joined the Bullet Club. But the match was great to see. Um, these guys, but however, it, uh, if you guys don't know this, the commentators for the show is Kevin Kelly and Alex Kozlov. Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero were known as the Forever Hooligans, as one of the best junior heavyweight tag teams in all of, in New Japan. Uh, Alex Kozlov is a, J, is a Bullet Club fan, but however, um, I don't think Jay White is feeling the love since he knows that Alex Kozlov was a multiple former member of Chaos. But Alex Kozlov is currently retired from ring. We haven't seen him in the ring for quite some time. But I don't know what to make of that. But it took almost 15 minutes for Jay White to beat Rock and Roll. That's like the longest. So he tried everything in his power to, um, to win, but he got the job done. But there will be still more of the Never Series. If you guys are still unfamiliar with what is the Never Series, well, right now they're combining... Uh, junior heavyweights and heavyweight competitors in the matches. So basically, it doesn't matter if it's a single competitor, one junior heavyweight and one heavyweight. It works tag team. It doesn't matter if it's one member is a heavyweight, one member is a junior heavyweight. The same thing will be composed. So that's how it works with the never. So don't ask me why they call it never. That's how they technically term they put it. So I think that's it for now with the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong. Let's jump in with some news updates. Alright, so the, we have great news for in the world of wrestling, as you know. There has been announcements from both AEW and, A and WWE. They acquired some great acquisitions. One of the acquisitions that WWE obtained is, in fact, is Ben Carter. Now, if you guys aren't familiarized with him, he's a young, up-and-coming, rising star in the independent scene. He's been making headways, including with GCW, which I've been following for months. Um, ben Carter's gained the attention on his recent matches in AEW Dark where he faced against Scor Scorpio Scott. That particular match not only had the attention of AEW, but also WWE. So the rumors were speculating that WWE and AEW were interested, but for now it's been foretold Ben Carter has finally signed with WWE. But according to Dave Meltzer that he reported, uh, the reason AEW did not sign him, which would have been a great acquisition on their promotion, was the reason is they got a lot of guys they still need to put in. So basically, they don't want to stockpile wrestlers that they may not use or put them on dark or whatever. So basically, they didn't want to cause any fuzz since they already got some talent they need to put over, which they're paying attention. However, Dave Meltzer also noted that being with WWE, it's also another 
worse it's a worse decision due to the fact that if you guys are fully aware WWE has a huge stockpile of talent they still haven't displayed either on national television or anywhere else that is one of the situations now you can ask me this what is the difference between AEW and WWE the way they act WWE has tons of wrestlers they just picked up a lot of wrestlers that we haven't seen let's say uh, two years ago they had this wrestler that they signed but we haven't seen him in two years and then we were expecting him for years to come and they haven't let's say two more years has passed he's finally on TV that's the problem you got tons of tons of wrestlers you contain so that's the thing that Dave Meltzer has noted now do I blame Nate Carter signing with W? no it's his decision he probably wants to make the right call for himself AEW made a very hard choice knowing that they could put a lot of wrestlers not be on television. So that's one of the reasons why they did it. Sometimes we have to face logic and fact what's going on. Now, speaking of acquisitions, as I mentioned, Ben Carter may have been the one who's been acquired by WWE. It turns out right now AEW just finally acquired someone who I've been following for almost a year. That person is Serpentico. If you guys haven't seen him, he's been he made 22 matches in AEW Dark, and his teaming with Luther, his recognition uh, first appeared on the episode of Dynamite where they're celebrating Chris Jericho's 30 years in professional wrestling. Uh, Serpentico was in a tag team match with Luther as members of a tag team duo known as the, the Chaos Project. And allowed him to be picked up by WWE to sign him. Now, as a fan, I've always hoped we thought I, I love the Chaos Project uh, tag team scenario. It's something that I like. I like their combination. I love everything they've done. I, and somehow I had that strange feeling, the same way I did with Sammy Guevara, where I thought, oh, he's going to be signed with AEW. Why do I get the feeling he's going to be signed? I felt the same way with Serpentico. So that's basically how I felt. And I have to say, AEW made a great choice. A lot of wrestlers, including other promotions, especially the big promotion 11 Pro Wrestling, are proud that he is now signed. So congratulations to these guys for signing with their respected promotions. But however, let's continue with the updates for one last update. As you all know now, Kyrie Zane is currently back in Japan. Apparently, WWE has signed her as an ambassador in Japan for wrestling. Now, it's still unclear what it was. Speculation is, we do know for a fact, WWE wants to set up a foothold in Japan for a possible performance center and also in NXT Japan. Now, there's still no word yet if, there, if it's going to happen since we do know the Japanese wrestling scene are not interested. And only a small number of people were either trainers or wrestlers are. But it's still no word. As for Kyrie saying, it's now been confirmed she will return to WWE for Hell in a Cell to do commentary for the Japanese section. Now, this is very interesting to see. Now, we do know she's no longer doing in ring work. Uh, WWE want her to retire so they can focus more because um, WWE has been trying to keep her on their spotlight. But, however, even the uh, Kairi Sane was getting offers from Stardom to return. That's where Kairi Sane originally from. And it's still no word on that. But if you guys uh, hear things about Kairi Sane being in Hell in a Cell as a commentator, uh, I'm kind of interested to see how that plays out. So I think that's it for now for all of you guys. Just to friendly remind you, the next episode will be covering a couple of days of the road to the Road to Power Struggle, which is their latest uh, tour they're doing. Road, power, uh, road, uh, power Struggle was supposed to be for an annual tournament for the junior heavyweights, but apparently they have to downsize it. They don't have enough of the heavyweights, junior heavyweights, to be involved. Um, currently, the only ones that I have noticed is Doiki, uh, Kanemaru, Desperado, Bushi, Hiromu, uh, who else? Sho. Taiji Shimori. So basically, they might skip this one, the 
Junior Tag League Tournament due to the fact that we got a lot of the junior which we do know El Fantasmo is stuck in the UK. Um, who else is still not around? Uh, so it's Robbie Eagles, he's still stuck in the UK as well. So basically they might have to skip this particular tournament. They do it annually as well. So I will do the next episode, maybe three days of that. Uh, hopefully I'll set up the whole video, but also I'll so throw out a separate video for this Saturday's um, Bound for Glory. I'm excited to see this one, so I will keep an update on those. So I must bid all of you guys adieu, so goodbye, Mwah. and have a nice day. Bang.